hello today I am here trying to show anybody interested how to hook up an RSS feed to discord using their webhooks so there's already a if you look into discord webhooks there's a few applications that support it already like you can uh, you can have reddit certain subreddits posts to a discord channel uh, you can have github post updates to it but uh some, most of the more useful things you might want are in RSS feeds, which don't natively support them. So we're going to use a site called Zapier, uh, Zapier something, uh, because they support it. They support uh, forwarding RSS feeds to a webhook. And uh, as did, after tinkering around, I got it working the way I wanted to. So let's just uh, start. So after you, you have to sign in. You have to either make an account, sign in with Google. I think they have Facebook sign in. Um, anyways. Uh, there's gonna have to be two steps to this. There's the trigger, which is what causes this to start, and then the trigger will cause an action to happen. So the trigger will be an RSS feed. So whenever a new item is posted to a blog you like or something that has an RSS feed, uh, that new item will be the trigger. And then the action in this case is gonna be our webhook. We're going to send that information to our webhook. So let's just pick RSS right there. And uh, there's new item and feeds, the only event you can have for that. And okay, you'll have to get a feed URL. Let me make sure OBS is recording. Okay, cool. So uh, in this case, I'm going to just kind of repeat something I've already done. And I'm going to do surrender at 20. So if, you, if you're trying to keep up with league updates, man, there was totally an RSS feed button somewhere for this. All right, here it is. Cool. RSS feed. All right. So here, I already happen to kind of know that I don't need this last part of the URL, this random letter. So I'm just going to copy this part of it. But this is the uh, RSS feed URL. Uh, you can find them for lots of different sites. So now that we have that going, let's uh, paste it. Um, some of them might require some authentication, like username and password. In this case, uh, surrender at 20 does not require that. And for the most part, you can just kind of, uh, you can leave this as is. But if you know what you're doing and want something slightly different, and this provides that, then by all means change it. Okay, so what's going to happen now is it's going to just try to get a sample item from it. And if you gave a correct RSS feed URL, this should be successful. So again, in this case, the test was successful. Uh, let's just click viewer items so you can see. So you'll see in bold on the left, basically the name of something in the of this like feed item so the link edit uh let's look for more important things so that make more sense so let's see uh raw author name this is the person that wrote the article uh the publication date the title of the article the entire contents of it uh let's see you can get the link to it to the original article Except I don't like how this link looks. I like using the raw original link for this because this is the actual post. This one looks like it goes to the comments or something for it. I'm not sure. Let's go. Let's find out. Yeah, no, this is some weird link. Yeah, so I, I use this one. If you're using Surrender at 20, I'd recommend this. Anyways, let's continue here. And so now we have to choose an action app. So for this, we're going to be using webhooks because Discord supports webhooks. So, uh, webhooks, you'll be using post for this. Um, there's not much, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain this if you're not already familiar with the concept, so I'm gonna just kind of glaze past that, just go with post. All right, so you're gonna need a webhook URL. So what's gonna happen is, let me switch for OBS, and let's turn on so we can do. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, here's my Discord. And so, say you want to have a channel that, let, let me just make a channel test. So we have the test channel and we want to post Surrender at 20 updates to it. So let's go to edit channel, click webhooks, and can I, can I, thank you. All right, now that that's done, uh, let's do a webhook. You can name it here. It's tied to a very specific channel, so I'm going to keep it tied to this. You can give it an icon. You can always change the icon later and all this later. The important thing is we need to copy this URL. And after we copy this URL, let's go back to our browser and paste it. 
and we want to change your payload type ideally to JSON um, I think it also accepts form but uh, unless you're really familiar with this you should probably just go date with JSON all right so here's the basic way of doing it uh, I'll show you two ways the very basic way so if you want to just have it post some sort of message uh, in these data areas right here the left box you want to type in the word content and it's very important that you have just content and that's it and then over here you can type in some random information that you want it to send um, so let's say in this case we just want a link to the article whenever a new article is posted so they have an insert field button right here and what this will do is go through the different uh, items that were found in the RSS feed item and give you options for them so in this case we have all the nice stuff let's get our the raw ridge link which is what I'd like to use for certain property links let's go with that so now what this will do is every time it, the feed is updated it will post a message containing just that link now if you wanted to for example you can still type this by the way so if you wanted to just post that say you wanted to uh, let's let's put the cursor before it is it before it? No, it's not so let's see um, title Wow, I can't spell. That's great. Title, just to have title there. Put that there. And there. And okay, yeah. So let's put the title and then the link. It's gonna look kind of ugly in this format, but this is the easier way of doing it. Everything else you can just kind of ignore. And you press continue. And after you press continue, it'll ask to send a test. So let's just send a test. And if we look over, let me switch back over to Discord. If you look back over in Discord, see I got title, the word I literally typed there, and then it gives me the title because I chose that thing, and then it gave me the link for it. So this is this is a more basic way. So if you just want small pieces of information formatted in a certain, like in a very basic way, this will get that done. But you can take it a step further and have some better formatting for it. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm just going to walk through my other ones let me can I delete this one cool yes please trash it so this one is uh, same up until a certain point so whenever you go to here instead of clicking post you're gonna click custom request and you want to go you will have a uh, to edit template afterwards so if you just click custom request and click next you'll be brought here and here you'll specify the method post like we did earlier you'll have your link or your webhook link right there and then uh, data pass through make sure you select no for this and then uh, let's see and so in data here's where it gets kind of weird so this in in this case this is making an embed and I'll just uh, let me pull it up in discord and I'll show you exactly what it looks like and do, 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 do. So this last one would be the embed I have it formatted. Uh, it has the icon of the author, the author, the title of it is a link to the post itself. I have the categories here. I have the thumbnail for it put there. Um, so everything like that. So in this case, this is the setup for it, but uh, this is kind of unintuitive by itself. So let's just do something. Let's Google a quick uh, Discord embed visualizer I'll put a link to this in the description so you can get here and discord these, these what you just saw in discord is called an embed it's these uh, specific objects like this thing and they have different properties for it so if you go here uh, we want to completely take out content unless you want a message right before the embed but usually you just want the embed content so here's where you will kind of adjust to make the embed look the way you want so in this case, we're starting with an embed here. So we want to change the title. Um, say we want to use a custom title, like the article title in this example. You're only doing static things right now, like things that won't change. So let's just get rid of the base title. Um, something important is make sure you keep the quotes. Any text you type in must be between quotes. So um, description, let's actually type something for description. Let's get rid of all this. Description. Uh, URL we'll get that for the article etc color okay so the color would be this color on the side 
and there's not an intuitive way to actually sh like make meaning to this number. Uh, so what you have to do if you want to change the color of this tiny little bar right here is you want to, I'll put a link to this too, let's, um, hex color codes and it's any random color picker. So go here, find a color you like. I like purple. Let's find a nice purple. I like that one. And so you see this thing right here, it says hex, and then you have a hashtag followed by some random things. Copy all of those, not the hashtag. I keep accidentally doing that. You want to copy that, and then I'll put a link to this too. Let's see, uh, hex to decimal. So you want to go to a hex to decimal converter. You can kind of ignore what this actually is and just kind of copy paste. It copied the damn hashtag. And you want to convert, and then you'll get your decimal decimal number right here. So from this decimal number, you can copy it, and you paste it for the color of your embed visualizer. Um, it's yelling at me because the title's empty, so let's just slam some buttons. And so now, this bar is to the left. Um, the thumbnail right here is going to have to be a URL to an image. So in this case, the thumbnail is this top right corner right here. This image will be displayed bigger at the very bottom. Um, the author will be displayed at the very top. If you give them a URL, clicking their name will bring you that URL. So if they have, if the author, if, uh, if you're doing some sort of post, the author has their own blog, you can make that link there, whatever you want to do. And then fields are just these random, basically, categories you can add here. Let's get rid of some emojis and just type in some stuff so you can see what it looks like. So it's basically like a title, description. Title, description. They threw a whole bunch of emojis in here by default. So title, um, you put some description here. In, in my example, I used, uh, I created one for category. And this is basically what you're going to want. So after you have this set up the way you want to, and make sure there's no red bar giving you an error up here. In this case, you just want to copy all of this with all the static data type. And we're going to fill in some stuff. So like, I don't have the title, what I want it to be just yet. It's just query. And uh, afterwards, you want to go back here and you're going to paste it. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to, um, I'll just, in this case, I'll delete this. So in, say we left the title blank, for example. Now you can't leave it blank and test it because it'll yell at you for being blank in this visualizer. But anyways, you'll have your your two quotes that are with nothing in between them. So just put your cursor in between them. So just click between the two quotes. Click to insert a field and scroll down. And let's do title. And, and you, you basically can repeat that over and over. Um, the 720 articles, for example, they have a description, but they're always empty. Um, I added the timestamp. So uh, the bottom of the embeds will to say the time the article is posted. Um, the thumbnail is the thumbnail URL that was given in the feed. And you can just kind of explore through a lot of these options, honestly, and decide what you want to add. And you can add a bunch of fields. There is a limit to the number of fields you can add. Um, and if you want to add more, just you kind of need to copy this format. So for each field you want to add, it's just this score, just these curly brackets with name, colon, then something here, comma, value, colon, some stuff here. Like just kind of copy the format. Make sure the last item doesn't have an extra comma at the end of it, because if you do, you'll notice it's got an error there. So it's kind of finicky, and uh, I can't easily explain the format of it to you right now. So uh, just kind of play around with it. You'll eventually get it. Um, you can ignore the inline fields for the most part. Uh, you can just never put this. Although if you actually are concerned about it, normally fields stack on top of each other like this, but if they're smaller and have less content, they could display on the same line, potentially. It's not guaranteed. It's just that they're small enough. So uh, that's what inline fields are for. So if you have a particular use case for that, use it. But I generally prefer to only use not inline ones. So just completely get rid of this right here. So let's, I'm just gonna trash it. And yeah, boom, this, this one's not inline anymore. Something important, so I said the embed visualizer, you just copy and you have embed right here. So something super important you have to do. I completely forgot about this part. For after you copy and paste this embed in, what you actually want to do 
is change the word embed to embeds, being plural. And then before and after, so if you see you click a curly brace, it's paired with a closing one and it highlights down here. So it's very important that you change this D to an S. It'll break the, vi it'll break the visualizer, so you wanna do it in here, but I already did it in there. Change embed to embeds, and then before and after the curly brace right there, you want to put a square brace. So put a square brace there, and then this one was paired down here, put one after there. It's very important to put that because for Discord webhooks, uh, for people who are more in this area, uh, this is more important to you if you're not much of a programmer or don't know much about web development or aren't that concerned about this in general, you can kind of uh, zone out. But uh, it actually takes an array of embeds, so you can add multiple embeds here. You'll just have to make an array. So this, inside the square braces, this would be all one embed. You can do a comma, copy paste that and change it up for a second embed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't want to do it in the visualizer because it just kind of breaks the embed visualizer. But that is the format for it. And, uh, Oh, I almost forgot something very important for all this. So after you do all your data, I spent so long talking about this data, I forgot. Uh, I think unflatten, you can just leave that. I think it's default, yes. I put it to no, trying to test something. I don't think it matters what that is there. Something important here, though, for headers, you want to add a header down here. Uh, it's going to be content-type with capital C, capital T. And you want to do application slash JSON. It, it, it's... I'm not entirely sure how mandatory this part is, but you should most definitely add it. And let's see. so afterwards continue, it'll already say my test is successful because I already did the test. So let's finish and make sure afterwards it'll be like, hey, do you want to turn your zap on? And that's when you turn it on. I just turned it on five seconds ago though, so it's already on. But uh, either way, I'll include the links to these uh, few tools in the description if you wanted to do it the more advanced way, but uh, the first way works perfectly fine. If there's just a small piece you need each time a feed's updated, um, I'm not sure the length limit of a message in Discord, so like maybe uh, the content was something that was provided. So if you wanted to, you can maybe just have it post the contents of the entire article there, although you'll start having issues if it's over Discord's uh, message length limit. I think it's 2,000 characters maybe. Um, so that's why I just provide a link. Uh, it doesn't clog up Discord as much. And uh, either way, I, I hope you guys walk away uh, knowing how to do this kind of understanding. If there's something that's unclear still, uh, just let me know in the comments below. Um, if you do decide to go the advanced way with uh, the embeds, those fancy Discord boxes are called just, they're called embeds. You can Google embeds if you're having trouble with them. The embed visualizer is probably going to be the best thing you can do because if it works in there, it will, I'm pretty sure, 90% sure that it will work within the uh, webhook. Except the, oh wait, wow. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this back. I'm going to edit this previous to another part of the video. 